<laughs> half a day, Ken, and half a day to all the people of Guam. Well, good evening to you. I understand you just got back from a trip to Kuwait and Iraq. Can you give us a brief overview? Yes, uh, it was uh, an inspiring uh, experience for me, and certainly uh, uh, it, uh, it proved to be very informative, and I think I speak for all members of the delegation. Uh, we visited, um, I'll just go down the itinerary. Uh, we visited with the Ambassador Paul Bremer, the Coalition Provisional Authority, uh, along with him in Baghdad, we met with General Sanchez and General Dempsey. We asked questions and they briefed us uh, very thoroughly on the situation in Iraq today. Uh, this was all in, um, in uh, Baghdad. And then, of course, the following day, we went up to uh, uh, Mosul, where we met with General uh, uh, Petraeus with the 101st Airborne Division. And uh, we certainly received a very informative overview of everything that's going on. And probably the most important aspect of my trip to Iraq was to meet with the soldiers from Guam. And I had the opportunity on Saturday evening and Sunday evening to sit down and have dinner with them. I took them some gujaria and some riskete and some Chamorro music on disc, and they were very appreciative. But one of them wants me to bring betel nut the next time. <laughs> Can you uh, tell me how their morale is? Well, I uh, questioned all of them. I, I uh, spoke to them with hard questions, you know, uh, how's everything here? Uh, uh, are you, do you have enough equipment? Um, is the food good? Are you sleeping well? And all of them seemed to say that uh, everything was going along pretty well. You know, it's, it's a, a wrap-up uh, after a war, and of course, uh, it's still a very dangerous situation over there. But uh, they seem to uh, to say that everything was fine. The only thing I think that that affects morale, the soldiers in Iraq today, is missing their homes, their loved ones. And this was the case with our Guam soldiers. They miss their home. They miss the home cooking, and uh, and then the uncertainty of when they're going to be uh, finished with their. Uh, uh, their duty there. There's no way of knowing, and I think they're quite anxious about that. But other than that, they are very professional. I was extremely proud of them all, Ken. Uh, the soldiers everywhere, everywhere we visited. We were in Kuwait, we were in Baghdad. Um, everywhere I, I, uh, I toured, I saw them, and I was indeed very, very proud of them. Congressman, there's been some uh, criticism of the media for not reporting the good things that are happening in Iraq and only reporting the bad things. Did what was your impression as you uh, as you looked around? Are, are there a lot of good things happening in Iraq right now? Well, I think we were pleasantly surprised, and we did all agree that sometimes uh, stories in the press are overblown and and. Uh, uh, you know, we, we don't always get a real true picture unless you, you go to Iraq and you see it for yourself. Uh, we found that people generally on the streets, as our, our uh, motorcade went down and throughout Baghdad, uh, people were waving, they showed the victory sign. Uh, these are grown men and especially children. Uh, it seemed that they do appreciate the presence of Americans there and they do appreciate what they were trying to rebuild their country and, and so they can enjoy the freedoms that uh, most everyone else around the world does. So I didn't see that uh, feeling that they didn't like us. Uh, there's always the minorities. They have them everywhere, you know, the people that uh, served under Saddam and loyalists. Uh, they're still out there. But um, I would say the majority of the people in Iraq are happy that we're here. And the military people in speaking to us also said it's very important that they, as military generals and, and officers, work well with the locals. Uh, we went to uh, Mosul where we met with General uh, Petraeus and I was very impressed with his uh, briefing and then he took us up to introduce us to the governor and the vice governor of Mosul. Uh, the governor is a Arab, the vice governor is a Kurd and we met members of the consul. So it's really the consuls in the districts uh, in the cities that are working very hard and the military is working hand in hand with them. Our troops are teaching them every aspect of rebuilding a community and I was really very very impressed with, with the general and his uh, uh, briefing to us. So now that you're back in Washington DC what do you do with what you found in Iraq? Well, you know, of course, uh, Congress is debating now over this uh, $87 billion request. And I think the, uh, the, the problem right now is the construction money. 
and uh, they're looking at uh, loans, grants, or outright uh, 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 funding. And uh, I do know and I can see that it must be terrifically expensive to rebuild Iraq. When you're there and you see it, you see all the building going on, you, you see uh, taking care of our troops over there, and there's so many thousands of them there, that it must be, the tab must be <laughs> very high. And they indeed do need the money to continue. Otherwise, we're just going to do a, a half-baked job and walk away and leave the people struggling. Unemployment is still extremely high in Iraq. So we have to look at uh, uh, the economy as far as inviting U.S. companies in uh, so that uh, they will hire the local Iraqis and, and give them employment because there will never be any rest in the country until the Iraqis are, are do, you know, gainfully employed. Do you think the Guam uh, soldiers in Iraq are going to be able to come home for some R&R? &R? Oh, I'm sure. All, they're trying to rotate it now. The reservists are coming in uh, by the hundreds and thousands. And I understand even our National Guard in Guam is, is soon to be deployed over there. So uh, they are getting some relief. And I think that's what they need, just a break. Uh, some of our uh, soldiers have only been there a couple of months, three months. Uh, but those that have been there over a year, I think it's time for them to, to get a little R&R. &R. Uh, but I do want to say that they're very professional in everything they do, from what I saw. And we truly did see a great deal. Incidentally, Ken, we visited a hospital and we visited um, a, a school. And that was very enlightening. The schools are all open. The hospitals are all open. We visited a Catholic hospital, St. Raphael. And uh, we visited the classrooms. Uh, it, was, uh, it was so heartwarming to see the children. They're so well disciplined with their big brown eyes looking at us and showing the victory sign. And then we went to the hospital where I was able to, to as the only female member of the delegation, I was able to go into the birthing rooms, the labor rooms. And we gave them uh, many tons of medical equipment. We took over uh, phone cards. Uh, we took over air conditioners. This all went with us uh, on the plane. How did you feel as a female in Iraq? Uh, well, you know, uh, I was told by the authorities that prior to the war and prior to the Hussein era, women were very, very uh, dominant in Iraq. They were leaders. And they were, uh, you know, leading in every aspect of society. And it's only during uh, the Saddam era and, uh, you know, of course, now they're emerging again. We went to the schools. The headmistress was a woman. And, uh, no, I felt, uh, and I did ask some hard questions about the role of women in reconstructing Iraq. Uh, Congressman, I'd like to switch gears with you uh, quickly and just ask you if you know what the uh, status of the uh, Compact of Free Association is. Well, as I told you, Ken, early on, it was going to be a long climb, <laughs> and uh, we're in there. We're we're uh, we're feeling good about it. Uh, right now, it's a scoring issue, and uh, we're we're working on it on a daily basis, watching it, keeping an eye on it. Uh, there are a couple of uh, uh, concerns from the different committees about the uh, education programs in the other areas. As far as our two amendments, uh, we feel that they are pretty safe. But uh, as I said, you know, it's been a long struggle, and we just keep our fingers crossed, and hopefully in the next couple of weeks we'll know a little more. Do you have any sense when this may go up for a vote? I would say, uh, well, uh, the continuing resolution went into effect, taking it up to the end of October, so uh, we should know before the end of October. Thank you, Congresswoman. Is there anything else you wanted to add? No, other than uh, I want to tell the parents of those serving in Iraq that uh, uh, just to continue to pray for the soldiers there. They're doing a wonderful job. I was so proud of them. I, I was, it was like a mother meeting all her, her children over there, and, uh, and they were glad to see me too. I, I think uh, they just miss home a lot. So please uh, continue to remember them in your prayers and be very proud that Guam is playing a very important role in the reconstruction of Iraq. Thank you, Congresswoman. Have a good evening. Thank you. All right, we'll see you.